This is Art and Soul of the City, where we showcase a diverse group of performing artists in the Midwest region. Today, Mike Moses interviews internationally acclaimed artist and 2010 Spoken Word Album of the Year winner, Talam MC. You have to know this is majestic. If, if you're tired of your favorite skirt, let's address it. We can discuss our financial future until you feel truly vested. I want to be domesticated like ordering Netflix on a PlayStation and intrigue you with my patience and promise to never leave you wait and see. This is a swimsuit issue. I just met you and I already miss you, but I recognize opportunities knock, so how could I not stop, try to open up my heart and at least get to stand at the windows of your soul until you give me permission to climb through. Because the sunrise ain't never been breathtaking until I finally saw the sunrise behind you. So you're back in Fort Wayne again. Where has your travels taken you since the last time you were here? I've been to Los Angeles since then. Uh, I've, I've been to Texas, to Austin, and uh, Fort Hood. Okay, you've been interviewed on the radio by uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool, and that seems like that's one, one of your favorite things that you've done. Um, it's you, haunting. It's haunting. Why? Because I can be in a grocery store, for instance, anywhere in the country and hear him. And I always feel like he's laughing at me. So <laughs> <laughs> why do you feel he's laughing at you? I feel like every time I'm in a supermarket or, you know, at a whatever, walking through a mall and I hear one of his songs, it feels like he's laughing. Like, see, you ain't applying yourself. <laughs> you, can, you can be doing so much more. <laughs> People always talk to me about how come I never take a break? So today, uh, and yesterday have been, I guess, a break. I mean, this isn't the Bahamas, right? Right. <laughs> but yet and still, I haven't, I have been inactive. Now, how long have you been doing spoken word poetry? I've been writing poetry since I was a child, since I was four. I've been doing it full time since 99. Okay. Yeah, 86 is when the slam started. See, here in, in Fort Wayne, a lot of folks don't know what the slams are. I don't even have a concept of what the slams We started Four years ago, doing what we call the Summer City Poetry Slam, but it wasn't like a battle. Or a slam like is that. a competition. It's like a talent competition for poetry, okay. Olympic style. Okay. Five judges. The judges rate you from zero to ten. But in regards to poetry, it's only helpful to the extent that it gets the crowd in and gets the crowd involved. It's not a meritocracy. You know, the, the best poets that you hear right. will tend to lose anyway. Like I said, we got started, and I don't understand poetry or spoken word the way that some of the others did. I was into comedy doing what I was doing. And this is very closely related. It, it is, in a sense. And I didn't know it was like that, you know. And so I come across your page and you had deep thoughts, but also through the video, that the rare video that I was able to find of you, I saw that you were able to entertain and with facial expressions and hand gestures. Was that something that was always with you when you started performing or did you have to develop that? Um, I would say it was always with me. Okay. I'm better at it now than I've been. I, you know, I grow at it, but it's always been with me, you know? You expect to have a comfortable room with space to work if you need to. You expect to be able to unwind. You expect to have a good breakfast before you begin your day. You expect to be able to check in and check out quickly. But at the Baymont Inn, our guests come back again and again because we don't just make them feel welcome. The Baymont always makes me feel like I'm at home. Find out why so many people say the Baymont Inn exceeds their expectations on West Washington Center Road, east of Lima Road. Hello. Is this Mrs. Jones? Yes. This is JRJ Collections. This call is being recorded for quality assurance. We've attempted to contact you on several occasions without any success. If your account is not settled in full today, we will garnish your wages and freeze your bank account. You will be responsible for all court costs. The date for a reduced settlement has passed. This matter must be resolved. You can pay by credit card, debit, or check by phone. Hey. This is your last chance. Don't call me again. I filed with Styles. 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 Styles Law Office. Bankruptcy Attorney. One of the world's top party destinations has brought you the best in entertainment to Fort Wayne, Indiana for 22 awesome years. For a long time. How many people experienced Corn, Nickelback, Snoop Dogg, Godsmack, 311, LL Cool J, Mister, Papa Roach, Sugarland, Tesla, Keith Sweat, and more than a thousand other tremendous artists. All up close and personal, the Pierre's way. To check out upcoming concerts and events at Pierre's, surf the web straight to itstheparty.com. Needing new furniture or wanting to sell yours? 
Shop, buy, or sell your pre-owned quality furniture today at Cherished Again. Call for details or stop in and see the large selection of furniture at Cherished Again, 230 East Collins Road. Finances in a wreck? Don't let creditors take over your life. Save your house and all that you've worked so hard for. Free consultation, payment plans, evening and weekend appointments. Call Jeff Arnold, 1-888-600-LAWS for good help fast. Now more on Art and Soul of the City with spoken word artist Talam AC with Mike Moses. Um, one of the pieces that I enjoy a lot of, God's work. When I wrote the poem, when I wrote that piece, I thought people would be upset about okay. it. Okay. But what came back from it is totally different. I thought that people who were especially religious would not like that piece, but that was never the case. And now in an in age with, with your Eddie Longs and your Catholic priests, uh, pedophiles, right? it seems like the piece even makes more sense to the people. It does. But, you know, I just thought it was interesting because as a, as a comedian, you know, you, you brought up Eddie Long. As a comedian for me, that's someone that I've, I've talked about and then you thought maybe... Eddie, uh, Eddie Long, we hear little stories here and there, we give him a pass. But once, you know, you know, people start like one suit, two suit, three lawsuits, four lawsuits, you know, we go back to that one thing that, that even holds true in our community, which is that 11th commandment. I don't know why <laughs> it never sh it made, made an appearance in the Bible because it was the most important of all right. the commandments was the 11th one, which was thou shall not get caught. Now, <laughs> once, <laughs> once you get caught, oh, it's over. We right. get to talk about it. Blasted out of my sleep at six o'clock in the morning. Some maniac outside leaning on his call horn. Got to go outside and teach him the proper etiquette. Neighborhood bad enough. Can't let it get worse than it already is. Y'all hear me? Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. I need my sleep. That's the only time on this planet that I ever get any peace. I tried that college thing on some American dream tip, but yet I still live on the same street that I grew up on. Them same streets that I grew tough on. My mother hoped that I would surpass at least to the middle class, but yet I'm still stuck on that same mentality. And all those years of college ain't even challenged me. But when I graduated, life was right there to put a degree in my hands and a foot on my chest. And here I am dressed in my pajamas, no slippers, about to run outside and rip the backbone out this fool. Ain't got nothing to show for all those years of school, but bad credit. Just me. <laughs> and even worse decisions. And I live in a neighborhood where people buy food on credit so they finance what they don't just take and they're making payments on food that they already ate. And when they see me on the street, they're looking at me like they're about to break. And I'm snatching open this door like I'm about to break. And I see my best friend. And he's sitting in a minivan with four of those child car seats. He's looking at me with a gun in his hand. It's like I can hear his heart beating. With his other hand, he takes a swig of liquor from a bottle of scotch, pops the door locks like get in. Moves the pictures of his children off the car seat with the gun, throws them in a the glove box, and it's like everything stops. And we drive, and we drive, and we drive till we get to the part of town where it seems like the American dream is still alive. And in my mind, I'm playing Nina Simone as I'm looking out the window on the passenger side. And it's like somebody scraping their fingernails along my bones as I feel this grown man cry. And I wonder if he knows that tens of millions of people in this country are depressed, but using alcohol or drugs to remain in denial. I wonder if he knows that there's a suicidal tendency hiding behind almost every profile. And no matter how many times they go back to school or how many jobs they work simultaneously, they can never seem to change their lifestyle. But somehow, they convince themselves it'll be different for their children. And eventually, they'll realize that's a fantasy, but they need something to believe in. Until then, in him, he just wants to be a father to his children. But sometimes, y'all, after all the love is gone, children become pawns in a relationship. And, and his relationship with his children is the vehicle that his ex-wife chooses to take out her frustrations with. And if he's just one day late on the child support, she reports it to the courts. And, and what's driving him crazy is yesterday, he just got laid off. Now, 30 days ago, her and the kids just moved in with a new man who drives a Range Rover and plays golf. And that's a year ago from the day that my best friend had to go to jail for making her last boyfriend stop telling the children that their father was soft. And right now, he feels like everything's lost. That's why I'm glad he came to me to give me this opportunity to put a few thoughts across. And you see, all day and all night, we talk. And I tell him, a man is judged by what's in his soul and what's in his heart, and not just by what's in his pockets. I tell him, me and him are friends who thick and thin, and if he's in pain, we need to put our brains, time, and money together to stop it. I tell him the fact that when I have a lot of money is a problem, then rather than getting fed up, what we need to do is wake up and like Moses and Jacob, whenever we get together, just find new ways to profit. Because in my eyes, our friendship is how we live and how we die. 
And don't you ever believe that even for a second that I would ever let you slide. Now, what I'm about to say, I want you to listen with all your pride and sexuality aside because as God is my guide, like my own self, I love you. You did a piece back in May uh, for a couple single fathers that was in their brotherly love. Um, is that, so I've always wanted to ask, was that someone that you knew? Was it based on you? I mean, where, where did you draw? The poem came from a dream, actually. Oh, wow. And a lot of my friends have children, but none of them are single fathers. I wrote that poem because people were complaining. It, it was a long series of poems. It started with a poem, I think, called Come Back Forward. And then because of Come Back Forward, people said, well, what about men? So I wrote another poem. Then they were like, the women were like, well, what about us? And, and it just, so it was a long series of poems. And Brotherly Love is just a piece of, of, is a part in that series. I have never really had a serious relationship with a woman who didn't have kids. Never, okay. not a serious one. Like if you had never had, if you didn't have kids, it was like I couldn't take you seriously. Like you, you haven't really lived the spectrum of life. <laughs> you know, you don't know what it is to live until you've been in a situation where there's somebody on this earth that you would die for, for real, or give whatever you had to before you gave to yourself. I'm irritated by the men who are the fathers of these children who don't participate in their lives. So a lot of those poems, like metaphysics and, and such, are written not from the standpoint so much of, oh, you, you know, you great, wonderful mother, I, I want to say something to exalt you onto a pedestal. It's kind of selfish from my standpoint, like I'm with this woman and she got a kid, but dude, what are you doing? It's metaphysical. And the only thing that most of us know about metaphysics is the question, metaphysics is the question if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? And what's so funny about that is there's people in our community who practice metaphysics without knowing it, and they have a similar question. If a man has a child and he doesn't do anything to help support it, does it really exist? See, I ain't got no deadbeat friends because I know a man who got his own child's back and never have my back in the end. Besides, what makes him think he could stand in the same room with men? Why face your fears? Stay home. Play PlayStation. Drink beers. I hope you choke on 40 ounces of your children's tears. Happy that your baby's mom's got a new man who could help pay for your kids. Name one thing more important to do with your money than take care of your child. And it doesn't even occur that now you're forcing your mother to watch you do the same thing to another woman that your father did to her. Oh, I love sneakers. Awesome. I think it's great. Tons of laughs. It's great. Yeah, we had a great time. Oh, we love sneakers coming by. Oh, I love Snickers. I'm always here. We love it. Oh, I think it's great. It's the uh, best thing happened Fort Wayne. It's hilarious. Oh, it was wonderful. My face hurts. We had a lot of fun. I've been to a lot of comedy places in the country, and Snickers has to be probably one of the best. Seriously, Snickers? Best place in Fort Wayne to go. Come out to Snickers. It's where it's at. Everybody knows us, Snickers. Enjoy a quiet, comfortable stay at the Best Western Luxbury Inn. You will be rewarded with a great night's sleep in our newly renovated rooms. Our friendly staff and great service won't leave you feeling homesick. We offer a full complimentary hot breakfast. The Best Western Luxbury Inn. Once you stay, you won't want to go anywhere else. In Fort Wayne at exit 102, off I-69. Stop in and see the latest arrivals in new and consignment furniture at Cherished Again and Discount Mattress Outlet. Whether you're needing furniture for your home or office, shop Cherished Again and save 50 to 80%. Located at 230 East Collins Road. Stop in and save now. Is this Mrs. Jones? Yes. This is JRJ Collections. This call is being recorded for quality assurance. We've attempted to contact you on several occasions without any success. If your account is not settled in full today, we will garnish your wages and freeze your bank accounts. You will be responsible for all court costs. The date for a reduced settlement has passed. This matter must be resolved. You can pay by credit card, debit, 
checked by fall. Hey, this is your last chance. Don't call me again. I filed with Styles. 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 Styles Law Office. Bankruptcy Attorney. Evolve Spa, a place where tranquility and peace fill the air. Where your mind, body, and spirit will evolve from a hot stone massage, Polynesian pedicure, or herbal sachet massage. But there's so much more to experience at Evolve, and we know you'll want to share it with friends and family. So take an hour-long vacation, and before you leave, be sure to take a gift card home, or log on to EvolveSpa.net, and we'll send them a gift card for you. Evolve Spa, a place like no other, just down the road from Jefferson Point. One of five poets featured in the New Jersey Performing Arts Center's groundbreaking Theater of the Spoken Word, today's guest on Art and Soul of the City, Talam AC. Here's Mike Moses. You may need some time to think about this. Give us... Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> give us... Uh, wait, wait, what you about to ask? <laughs> five things, five facts that people don't know about you. I don't know what people don't know about me. You know, I have two daughters and a son. Um... People know I'm from North New Jersey. I don't eat poultry, pork, or beef. I, uh, I stay away from corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. I don't really eat desserts. I like to drink, but I think people know that. I'm very shy. It causes me a lot of problems because people see me on stage and I'm, I'm really, you know, right. uh, animated on stage and Gregorius. And then they see me off stage and wonder where that guy was. Right. And in, in many people's interpretation, it is some type of ego issue that I have that keeps me from being as Gregorious off stage as I am on, when really it's just the fact that I'm an introvert. But I've noticed that artists that's really coming from the heart, on stage, that's, they do what they do. Off stage, they are, like as you say, introverted. But then there's those other folks that they just love themselves. I don't know if I'm saying I love that. myself. I mean, don't get no, me no, wrong. No, I wasn't no, sitting. Much, I wasn't sitting here with a razor blade before you got here. <laughs> I, I, I dig myself. I think I'm, you know, I, really, really cool guy. Yeah, I, I keep wondering if you didn't go into spoken word, would you have ever tried comedy? Because I you, doubt you're it. very funny. I mean, I doubt it. I mean. I don't think of myself as like super egotistical, right? But I do have my limits, and I think that in order to be a comedian, you got to be willing to, like, you know, forego self. I would have to forego my personal feelings and my self definition in order to chase the joke. <laughs> a black woman with a college degree in the 1950s who bought a house for her siblings and her parents and raised her two sons to either get educated or get busy. Told her husband, if I'm going on vacation, you could best believe my grandchild is always coming with me. Comprehended. Told my mother, if somebody steps to my grandson and gets knocked out, never punish me if he gets suspended. Just, just ask him how it start. My paternal grandmother, Flora AC, was my heart. And my mother is a black nationalist with a master's degree in mathematics who's been programming computers since long before they had keyboards. I'm talking punch cards. And, and she never cared about my rough housing in the street, but... If I ever disrespected her, I got punched. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> and, and then hit with switches till I blacked out like them computer glitches. And if I came home with bees, she would make me study more to ensure I get the picture like tons of megapixels. She developed me to be sharp. Still my favorite person in the world. My mother Jacqueline AC is my heart. I'm a father to my son. And I've been one since the beginning, but every advantage I've ever given him has been the product of five women. Um, five women. That's like a crowd. It's like favorite. actor's studio. Like, yeah. Five women. <laughs> <laughs> let's but, discuss that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's discuss the five women. Um, very powerful piece. Thank you. A lot you. of people like it. Um, it's very relatable. Um, how did you come up with it? I mean, I mean it happened to yeah, you. Where but, does, I, I know, right? Where, but, does, where does that poem come from? Um... I've been able to endear myself to audiences better than maybe any spoken word artist ever could. And I credit that poem as part of it because one thing I've learned in the last couple of years or one thing that I've been able to put to isolate is that context is king. Right. Well, if you say Lil Wayne and Drake and let's say, and special guest Jay-Z are gonna be in Livonia, there wouldn't be nobody else in Detroit. They would all just go, because context right. is king. They've already, they know who those people are and they've attached certain uh, beliefs and uh, expectations, expectations right. to those individuals. So context is king. And one thing about that poem 
is that it gives people a context. How often do you write? <laughs> it's a very good question. Very rarely, actually. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I can go five or six months without writing a poem. But then when that six months is old, over and I feel like writing a poem, I may turn around and write six poems in two weeks. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't know how I remember the poems that I do. I think that's like the definition of, of a, a gift is that I can't even explain. I, don't, I can't explain how I write them because I don't write them on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, I write them in my head. I am every man in here. You got commitment issues? I've been there. Even been married, in fact. And somewhat prematurely, perhaps it's better late than never, but if the first time's the charm, I pray the second time's better. Next time I let her prove she's a team player first instead of rushing and backwards and expecting the worst. Because our time on this earth is too short, and maturity is knowing that what women want might not be what you thought. And two ears and one mouth means we could all stand and do twice as much listening, and maybe long-term peace is worth the temporary grief of giving in. And in this world we're living in, me, being a man means controlling your sentiment because ain't nothing more important than doing everything you can to always be a gentleman. What's more attractive than class? Yeah. Who? Yeah. And if she's with me, she don't touch her coat, doorknobs, nor pump gas. Ah. Uh, I give her the benefit of what my mother's upbringing has, and if you don't want to be treated with respect, then I'm sorry I have to pass, because it ain't no fun if you can't be spoiled, and the royal treatment is all I do, and I ain't never satisfied till every woman passing by wishes she was you. I am, I am every man in here. I got the same temptations, the same fears. I got masculine problems and masculine language, masculine issues and masculine anguish, but you'd have to be a man to see me in anger. Women only get to see me at my tamest, my mellowest. I prefer female company, but my fellas always receive fellowship. Still admit this world is a lonely place when you ain't sitting across my beautiful face, maybe a little passion fruit and tangere with some seafood hanging off your plate, and you trying to be charming and make her day. Yet every word you say is sincere. I don't aspire to be perfect, but I aspire to be perfect for you. I am every man in here. Likewise, I want my daughters to be sincere. And for my son, I want to be the perfect example, a father who also provides his woman with ample resources. And of course, it's easy to get all close and whisper something pleasing in your ear. But the challenge is to also be responsible. And I put that challenge to every man in here. So when you go into the five women poem and it was perfect and then you go into every man in here, I mean, at that point you had the ladies and it's like a lot of guys like, oh man, we're done, you know. Whenever I would do five women, I would do every man in here. They became like one piece. I don't know why, because they're very different pieces. Right. But it, it's a ride for some, at least in my opinion. Again, I don't know spoken word. Now, of the five women from the poem, how many of them are still here? Just my mother. I never knew my great-great-grandmothers, right. but I knew my great-grandmother, I knew my mother's mother, and I knew my father's mother. Okay. What entertains you? I'm entertained by comedy, but it, it, it's very hard to find good comedy. Right. We can name, we could sit here and name each of us five or ten of our favorite dramatic movies easily. Yeah, I know I could easily give you five dramas that I loved, you know, right. but now I need like a two and a half men or a Seinfeld or you know, even Cheers or Frasier or something, you know, Golden right. Girls, you know, the, the, the really well-written stuff right. makes me laugh. And I like to laugh because life is sad enough, it's dark enough, it's depressing enough. So what entertains me, I would say, are, are really well-written comedies. Is there any spoken word poets that you would go see that you, like come to town? Because normally, if like me, I do comedy, so there's not very few comedy Listen, shows I'm gonna pay for. It's a hard question and an easy question. If you're talking about people who are from prior to my generation, yeah, I mean, it, easily I would go see. Uh, I would go see Sonia Sanchez. I would go see Amir Baraka. I would go see. Uh, I think that Gil Scott Heron is the best that ever did it. Art and Soul of the City is Fort Wayne's hottest locally produced entertainment show on Fox Fort Wayne. I hear 
had some great experiences the last 20 some years. Next Saturday, Art and Soul of the City presents blues guitarist Larry McRae. <laughs> That's Art and Soul of the City every Saturday at 12.30, right here on Fox Fort Wayne. is quickly becoming the destination for homemade soups, salads, and scrumptious entrees from a versatile menu that caters to the pickiest diner. CS3's Tiger Room growls with music from the best local bands that make even the big city clubs envious. Next time you're at a Tin Caps game, the Embassy Theater, or just looking for a great lunch, dinner, or night out, make CS3 your final destination. Calhoun Street Soup, Salads, and Spirits. Shh, still downtown's best kept secret. One of the world's top party destinations has brought you the best in entertainment to Fort Wayne, Indiana for 22 awesome years. For a long time. How many people experienced Corn, Nickelback, Snoop Dogg, Godsmack, 311, LL Cool J, Mister, Papa Roach, Sugarland, Tesla, Keith Sweat, and more than a thousand other tremendous artists. All up close and personal, the Pierre's way. To check out upcoming concerts and events at Pierre's, surf the web straight to itstheparty.com. Finances in a wreck? Don't let creditors take over your life. Save your house and all that you've worked so hard for. Free consultation, payment plans, evening and weekend appointments. Call Jeff Arnold, 1-888-600-LAWS for good help fast. The new CD, Boss. I'll only take you right that. If it, five to six months, inspirations on that one. It was I mean, written, it was written fairly quickly. Um, I would say no more than five months. Tell folks how they can get any of your CDs. TalamAC.com is an often misspelled name. It's starting to become the. It's starting to affect me because people are. Mis I, I had a whole interview in a newspaper in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. They misspelled my name at every turn, oh, wow. and they had my album cover in the interview, like in in the in the newspaper. It was right there. <laughs> It's T double A L A M A C E Y dot com and Twitter backslash Talam A C, YouTube backslash Talam, Facebook backslash Talam A C, 